this. Do you hate mild spills? <laughs> but the, 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 today, Junior. Today you're going to learn some critical information, especially if you have a turbo car with ball bearing turbos. But really this applies to any, any vehicle. It's just a big deal. But you need to let it warm up before you just turn it on and shut it off. And even more so if you have something that runs on E85 because you have all kinds of moisture coming out of the exhaust when you first fire it up and that stuff will sit in your turbine housings and rot stuff out really quickly. I got a full explanation from Robert at uh, Force Performance as to why you need to do this, but before we get to that, I'm gonna fire this thing up and show you how much moisture is actually in there. Now I have my, my downpipe is still disconnected because it's not done yet. So it'll be a great example. You'll be able to see how much stuff really comes out of there, out of here. Um, I'll fire it up and rev it a couple times. And you'll see, there'll be, it'll be all wet right here, for sure. You can see the water beads in there. All that stuff, that's running through the turbo, it's on the valves, it's in between your piston rings, it's everywhere. Look. I mean, you can see it's coming out in steam now because it's just starting to get hot enough to burn off. You really gotta let your stuff warm up enough so that you don't just let it run just like that and then shut it off and park it because then that lets rust build up. It can mess up your turbos. You gotta let it run long enough so that like if you spit on the header, it would sizzle off because if your spit sizzles off, then it will also get out the moisture that's in that stuff in the form of this steam here. I'm gonna let it run more because I'm not gonna let it sit like this and crud up my turbos. So now we're gonna pass it over to Robert and he's gonna explain to this in a more legitimate capacity as to why you need to do it, what happens if you don't, and we'll even show you what a turbine shaft looks like from one that's been messed up. A lot of people were looked at uh especially if you're in a hurry to get this car out of this trailer or back these two race cars out of the way so that we can get these, this customer job in here and, and get started on this this morning. Sometimes there's a tendency to, if it's, got, if, if it's kind of a street car, you just hop into it, fire it up, back it out, and park it around the side of the building. You may only have it running for 20 seconds. What you just did was populated a bunch of really acidic moisture all in the inside of all the exhaust parts, and then you just left it there all day. Then at the end of the day, you fired it up again and did the same thing when you pulled it in. Now, say you've been moving it in and out of the shop for the last two weeks because you're not messing with it, okay? You've just done this 10 times. Uh, you just deposited more moisture on there, you know? You walk up to a cold window and it's a, your, your turbocharger, the inside of your turbo is a cold window and you breathe on it. <gasps> okay, there's moisture that, that is on there. That's, there's no way around it. It's just physics of things. And that, what else is in there? Combustion byproducts. What's in combustion byproducts? Acids, really nasty little leftover parts of race gas. You know, a uh, little shit that made a chemical reaction with some other stuff. And you know, it's just, all this stuff is corrosive. It's in there and it's corrosive. And it sits in the piston ring grooves and it sits on the outside of the shaft, outside of the piston rings. And it's just, they're wet. And, it, and, and it's even worse if you have iron bearing housing. So if you have iron bearing housing and a chrome steel shaft and uh, tool steel rings, well, all of those things are actually corrodible. You know, with enough moisture and enough acidic presence in the moisture, all of those things are corrodible. So they all start to fuse together, you know? So like a lot of times one of the service, one of the modes of failure that you'll see on a turbocharger is not really that it's exploded, but just that it doesn't turn very freely anymore. And you know, a lot of times this is due to, you know, in, uh, intermittent use firing it up and you get a lot of corrosion on the turbine side and it just kind of fuses together. Hmm. Or starts to have a lot of drag, you know, and so maybe uh, maybe you got it freed up. You you put some coil down in there and you turned it and you freed it all up and everything. But you go and run it. Well, the next thing that happened was it uh, it's not it's got too much friction in there because of the particles, the, the carbon particles, the, the rust particles. It's all really abrasive stuff. And as you put the shaft speed up high, uh, that now you just welded the piston ring to the shaft, and now the piston ring's turning with the shaft and it's tearing out the inside of the seal bore and oil's going everywhere because there's not effectively any kind of gas seal on the turbine side anymore. 
against yeah. that. Yeah, because it's it's this this is where the piston ring sits. Okay, and the moisture really can't get very far that way. So the corrosion doesn't happen in there, but the bearing housing seal bore is right around where this is. And so this shaft will rust, the piston ring ends up getting trapped in that rust as it expands in that groove and pinches the ring. Then when the shaft turns, it spins the ring with the shaft and it rips the bore out of the bearing housing. Hmm. And that's when you go, wow, I just, it was stuck for a while and now it's leaking really bad. <laughs> I know what happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it wouldn't turn and then I, I got it freed up and ran it for a while and now it leaks really bad. <laughs> I bet you I know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so those are, that's a really common uh, service mode uh, for turbochargers that uh, have iron bearing housings uh, specifically. So let your car run until you could spit on the header and it boils and off? Yes, exactly. Because you just need it to run long enough to where you'd be scared to touch that header. Because then there can't be any moisture in there. Yeah. You know, and having a powdery acidic residue on the inside of there is kind of harmless. Yeah, because it's not flowing. The, the, the liquid is, uh, is helps get that acid into solution and gets that acid spread over part and, and induces that initiation of that corrosion on those parts. So if you just never let there be water in there, then you you win that battle. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, that's really that's a really important thing. That's that's something I've been really conscious of ever since you told me that. I'll move the Escalade and I'll sit there, and if I don't want to sit there, then I'll just like idle it up with my foot. And people are looking at me like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm, I'm just letting it get stuff warm. hot, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna sit here hold it at 2,000 RPM for 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna let it idle for a minute, and then I'm gonna turn it off. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I do. Yeah. yeah, and then you're good, and you don't have that they don't have that corrosion lockup problem. Yeah. So uh, hopefully that helps somebody. The more I hear about this stuff, the more stuff that I feel like I've been told and noticed and heard from everywhere that is just not how it actually is or should be. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So I just let it run for a couple minutes with, you know, just idling it up with my foot. It should be hot enough to have all this stuff gone by now. What do you look at that? It's gone, completely dry. Now we know that it's all good. When I first fired this up, you could see the water droplets running out of the pipe it's just not good i mean all of it and your, your exhaust inside your headers if you got mild steel headers i mean i don't have mild steel but still like That's this you hate mild steel today junior well i got overdosed on protein we got another nomad in the works here his name's adrian barry hill yo adrian Dog. What is you doing? Alright, yeah, well. I took a shower. You took a shower? Yeah. You know you know I have a perfectly good shower that you can use. Can I use your shower? Yes you can. And then I ate 180 grams of protein because Mr. told me I needed my a gram of protein for every pound that I weigh, and I got really sick. <laughs> I told him you, you should have a gram of protein for every pound of body weight over the course of the entire day. I missed that part. And this guy decides to drink 180 grams worth of protein powder at the same time. What, what are you feeling? I'm feeling slightly better now, but I was... I was pretty septic earlier. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die. Yeah, you uh, you can't process all that protein that quickly. You have to do it, you know, in stages. Now we know. I feel bad for that toilet. It hasn't happened yet. Oh, it's coming. Oh, so am I. Oh. Twice, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to. Life is rough. Are we gonna have a podcast? About how not to consume protein powder? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should snort it next time. It might <laughs> hurt less. Straight to the brain. Oh, God. Well, I'm gonna go do a demonstration and fire up the Escalade and show the amount of moisture that comes out of the exhaust. Because I got an explanation from Robert as to why you need to let your stuff run for a certain amount of time so that doesn't happen. Really? So I'm going to fire it up and show everybody how much moisture actually comes out of there. Because my downpipe you just disconnected, you can you can see it blowing out. Nice. So 
yeah, I was gonna see if you wanted to be involved in that, but yeah, it's apparent that you're uh, you're down for the count right now. I, I'm feeling better. I just had to take about an hour nap, you know, and I guess it's nice blow up mattress. Now the internet has seen how we're living out here. Yep. It's pretty rough. Someday, uh, someday cool. they, someday they won't believe you, and then you can be like, "Nah, dude, check this out." Pulling back. Oh, well, dude, I'm feeling way better. How about this? Why don't I set you up so you can take a shower while I'm filming? Oh, wow, and dude, then shower like with water? Yeah. Not out of a, a box. Yeah. Well, you smell like your dog right now, so. Oh, it smells like me. I'd prefer. <laughs> I stink. <laughs> I'd prefer to be in your presence when you didn't smell like an animal. <laughs> Alright. Bork.